Yeah, g'day, and welcome back to my old lathe channel. This week, I'm working on my controller again. Because controlling a CNC machine with just a keyboard and monitor is never a good idea, I was planning to make a proper control from the start. So in my last couple of videos, I welded up the new controller and painted and stuff, and now it's time to start putting in some parts. So let's mount this keyboard. This is just a membrane keyboard. I got it off German Craigslist called Kleinanzeiger. Yes, yeah, made by this Belgian company. To make it easier to mount, I've made up this little mounting frame. One screw here I didn't really leave space for. I was gonna use dome head screws, but it doesn't work in this location. Kind of excessively long screws these, it's gonna take me forever to wind all these nuts on. Well, that's lucky. Those little M3 nuts fit nicely with a 732 socket. Now because there was a bit of distortion with the welding, I've just been going through and lining up these uh, face plates and cutting the threads. This one goes together quite nicely. The bottom one might be more problematic. Well, I obviously got a fair bit of distortion through here, like that frame is really quite bent. This one's straight, and the top one's straight. But with that bow, it also puts that hole way out of alignment. So let's try straightening it. One of the good things about spending two weeks fixing my gearbox, this paint has now dried really well. So it's not too fragile. Okay, that's looking significantly better. This one might need a little bit more massaging, and I think one of the holes got welded over completely. That oh, doesn't look too bad. Just clean the paint out of the holes. Right, well that was the easy bit, doing the keyboard. These two are gonna take way longer because there's a lot of wiring to do. Oh darn, I just realized I've put the first scratch in the paint job. It's like with a new car or a new guitar or something. The first scratch always hurts most. In my last video, I was complaining about my hacksaw. The screw had become all bound up, kind of thread bound, didn't want to adjust properly, it was kind of bottoming. Just using it was not a pleasant experience. First thing I did was just chase the threads, ran a tap down it. They weren't too bad, a bit of wear on them. This was the nut, just a three millimeter of steel, which the threads also look pretty mangled. So I just welded a nut to it. Ran a tap down it to chase that as well, and now it's looking good. Decided it was time to get some new saw blades for it. Got a set of four from this outfit. I've also been watching a bunch of the footage from the SpaceX launch of the Super Heavy. That's pretty wild, huh? The way the hot staging worked and also the way the engines failed after that sort of power slide maneuver. Pretty darn impressive. Wonder what the next launch, launch is gonna look like. Oh yay. That's not supposed to happen. Oh, you're kidding. I went all that work to fix it, and the casting broke. Glad I was recording that. About now, someone's going to start suggesting that I can just machine a new Pivity widget mechanism, which of course I could, but it's not like I don't have better things to do with my time. Like raking leaves. You know, growing up in a pretty sort of mild climate like New Zealand, I don't remember anybody ever raking leaves, but here it's a thing. I'm not really sure why I rake the leaves off the lawn because when it's windy they all blow down like a snowdrift into the driveway and end up against my garage door anyway. 
Still lucky I took the chance while the sun was out because a couple of hours later we got the first snow of the year. Anyway, back to the Shoblin. To make the monitor work with the somewhat narrow housing, I bought these like ribbon cables for HDMI and for uh, USB-C. Got them from Amazon, I'll leave a link below if you've got a usage for them. They were the most compact I could find, really designed around them, giving the monitor minimal space on that side. Mail time. So these are the new bandsaw blades I ordered. I got two. This one's a variable tooth, I think 10 to 14 pitch. That's going to be my go-to for stuff that's a bit thicker than sheet metal. So about 6 millimeters up to about 10, 12 millimeters. And the second one I got is a replacement 6 tooth per inch. Oh wait, I just noticed the 6th TPI is also a variable tooth blade between 6 and 8. Oh that's cool, because those variable pitch blades, they cut smoother, don't they? No, I'm not sponsored or anything. <laughs> yet. But this guy's got a website here in Austria, Bansoblatt.at or Frank Berger, you find him easily. I've bought blades from him before, I find him really reliable. Like these ones, I think I ordered them on Wednesday. He sent them on Thursday, they arrived on Friday, so. He does a nice job of grinding down the weld as well. Let's give the fine one a trial run. I made up a new accenter for the shifter for my dual bandsaw. This one only had about 11 and a half millimeters of eccentricity. Didn't work. This one's up more like 14 and a half. Let's see if it'll work. Loosen those up a little. This blade's a bit thicker. Wait a minute. When I put the blade in, it's riding way back where the teeth would get damaged. Ah. Part of the guide assembly is this rotating hardened plate which runs in a bearing and it feels like that bearing slogged out. So what are they? 9 sixteenths? Yep, sure enough that bearing's toast. The hardened guide feels kind of paper thin now. Interestingly enough, Dual went to all the effort to put a grease nipple on here, which appears to be swivelable so you can grease it from every direction, or it's a strip thread. But it doesn't matter because whoever's owned this saw for the last 10 years never put any grease in it. You can also see from the wear of the blade guides that the teeth have been running in the guides at some stage. Not good. That's interesting. This one's got a relief on one side and it's marked 1012, so I'm going to guess that was for 10 millimeter wide blades or 12 millimeter wide, whereas this one, it's the same width, but it has no step and isn't marked. Maybe it's a shop made one. Maybe they both are. At this rate, I'm never gonna finish my dual series, am I? Although that trilogy in, in five parts is already complete, I did hear that Douglas Adams was supposedly working on a sixth Hitchhiker's Guide book when he passed away. Maybe he was spending a year dead for tax purposes. Oh, hey, speaking of Douglas Adams, I didn't realize that Netflix remade Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency back in 2017 or 18 or something. So I was on a business trip and in the evening I binge watched some of that Dirk Gently series and man it's bonkers but it was pretty cool. That backup bearing was pretty loose in its uh, journal. 30 millimeters. Looks like the spud in the middle is 10. Half inch? You're kidding. Where am I supposed to get a 30 by 10 by half inch bearing from? Hmm. Anyone got any ideas? Wonder what this top bearing's like. It also looks pretty well coosed. This is a sacrificial part that the blade runs against. It doesn't have a lot of thickness left, but the bearing behind it's definitely not in a good shape. So I guess I'm not going to be trying out my new saw blade today. Watch the space for a future band guide video, I guess. Anyway, enough playing around with the band saw. Let's get the hardware mounted on the control panel. The idea being that this plate gets welded in place, 
then the main carrier plates get screwed in place and got uh, some of these little interface boards these boards just kind of help with the wiring a little they're already pre-scored they should break pretty easily okay These Cherry MX keys should click in nice and firmly, but I've got the cutouts just a little bit too large. So they're a bit loose and they kind of tend to fall out quite easily. So what I'll do, throw a little spot of super glue just to stop them popping out. I had to make up some just some plastic spaces because when I first installed the buttons directly into their slots I decided they stuck out too much and looked kind of stupid. As you can see on these ones, I started off doing an electrical connection. Just to help stabilize the buttons in position. Oh, that's really not good. These three holes don't line up. I've just realized this plate is flipped upside down. I didn't make those holes symmetrical. Since I put these switches in the wrong way, and they also have diodes connected, I think I'll just snip them out and replace them with some spares. I've got extra switches. I'll desolder them some other time. Wish I hadn't super glued these yet. They pop out easy enough. There's my horizontal buttons. I've just realized that when I want to put the spaces in, I numbered these wrong. This is supposed to be H0 and this H9. Looks like I've also made the spaces too long. I have to chop a bit off the end of them. I've just realized I don't have a full set of button caps. All of these ones don't need the transparent lid because they don't get any writing in them. I might go online and find some other ones that fit here better. Right, while I'm all set up to play around with electrical stuff, this is a battery for my new camera. Now I've been using Lumix G80 Micro Four Thirds cameras for a couple of years, but I kind of wanted to up my game. And this beautiful GH5S came up for a really good price and great condition. Big thanks to my brother-in-law who gave a generous birthday contribution to it. I hate using internal batteries because they don't last long. So I always set up with a dummy battery and I power the camera off this big Sony MPF battery, which has like hmm, three and a half times the capacity of the original. Don't have to worry about the camera stopping in the middle of a take. But this dummy battery comes with a useless socket. Luckily I've got a leftover correct socket. 2.1 by 5.5 or something. So let's glue these two together. I'll just slip over a bit of uh, heat shrink. To do the connecting, I've got a little box of solder sleeves. So I'll just use the Use the little ones. And we're ready to try it out. Let's throw the battery on the back of it. And here we go. This will run for a couple of hours easily, worth no worries. Oops, I've just realized that I have to click in the monitor at the top first, but then I'm sitting on the wires at the bottom. So I'm going to have to make little loops or something on the, out of those wires. Well, beep beep, boop boop. That's it mechanically all done. Two more big tasks on this. One, getting it all wired up, and two, getting the firmware tied into Linux CNC. So come back for my next video. Hopefully I'll make some progress on that. Thanks for watching.